Let us get there online. There we go. Hello and good evening, everybody. Good evening, Greg. And you know, you, you know what? The, this whole stream delay always throws me off when I'm talking to you. <laughs> yes. Well, we're, we're our life. We are live. So, hello and good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Zwartkring Malaysia sword fighting live stream where we get together every Thursday and we struggle with HEMA, make lots of mistakes, and then we do swords. Uh, struggle is the key word here. Struggle is the key word, right? If we're not struggling, we're not growing. And we're just coasting on our... I will say that ever since we started doing the streaming, I've had to like reread, read up on, and revise my own teachings. So... Uh you know, and I appreciate that because I everything I know about longsword I learn from you. Yeah, me, me too. And it's like it's really pushed me to to be more specific specific to the text, specific to the reading because I've always learned my techniques from my master Merlin from the Netherlands. And I've done some cursory reading and using some uh, interpretations from other people to 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 learn new techniques, but never quite had to dig into the uh, the manuscripts like I've had because, because other people in the chat are saying like, yes, but the text says, and then I'm like, oh, shoot. You know, I really <laughs> have to, like, I've always said that whatever I teach, I have to be able to account for how I teach it. And then uh, it's like, yeah, but the text says something different. And I'm like, okay, I have to uh, up my game, if you will. Although I have yeah. found that a lot of what I know is more or less directly from the text, so yeah, it's it's there. The, I I guess I'm different because I was doing the studying 133 by myself. Yeah, you studied I33 by by yourself, and that's that's a whole different ball game. I have True. read the first play at least 20 times now in the last I think two weeks. Mm. True. I mean, it was the same when I was studying. Um, Oleg, Sher Lahash. Oh, yeah, that, I remember when we were doing that. That was a lot of fun, too. But Sher Lahash is surprisingly straightforward. I can thoroughly recommend it to anybody looking to uh, explore a new manuscript that's not longsword. And if you're interested in uh, pole arm or quarter staff fighting, Sher Lahash is an excellent place to start because it is so clear by what they mean. Like, I think they right. have 25 techniques. And out of the 25, there were only one or two that I didn't initially grasp, like right from the get-go. You, you never expect the French to be so concise. <laughs> right? <laughs> Jorlash is a later manuscript, though. So uh, the yeah, author is fair. unknown, but it is, it, it is a, a slightly later manuscript. So by that time, you see, you see that also in the, the, the long sort of manuscripts that they, they become a little more a little bit more descriptive and a little bit more explaining what is meant rather than just actually isn't Shuri Lahash also from the same time period as as Longsword as our Lichtenauer Longswords? Well I would have to look that up. I would have to look that up. I yeah I was I under the, the impression it was the same time. Period. I was I was under the impression it's slightly later, but I might just be talking out of my ass here. Uh, I uh, that happens from time to time. We don't know. We, we don't know. We don't. We'll know. look it up. All right. All right. So, so what are we uh, going to do begin today? with our greeting, shall we? You have a, you have something. Yeah. You have a weapon in, at hand now, Fan or uh... I I do not. It's all still in the box. Shame on you. Go. I have go a sword a bag. Weapon. We're doing classes. Yeah, okay. You know what? Hold on. I'm gonna grab a. I'm gonna grab a weapon. Yeah, you better. You can't do a proper greeting without a weapon, like. This is a Sikhima, historical European martial arts. I advertise this as a sword fighting stream, and you don't have a sword. I mean, sure, Ringen is part of it, but... <sighs> Ringen would be the worst to practice, though, without a, a partner, because like, the dummy it will, offers no resistance whatsoever. Right. Anyway, you back yet? I'm trying very hard to, to keep your advice on looking at the cameras. I can't, I can't glance to my left to the screen. 
I by the lack of response, he's not here yet. Okay, so yeah, it's going to be interesting when we are going to get to uh, fourth grade materials when we're going to discuss Ringen and uh, which is German for wrestling. Have you entertaining chat? Yes. Well, I can't see the chat because I'm right, trying to I have look at the camera. You're my chat guy. All right. Well, I have a sword now. All right, you have a sword now. Okay, so we let's salute and greet each other. Christy. Sure. Christy. All right. So keep in mind, I'm I'm trying to keep up with the stream, and I'm like. <laughs> yeah, but then you're 20 seconds behind. Seconds behind whatever you're saying. Right. Anyway, um, all the same. Uh, good evening, everybody. I'm saying that the stream is buffering. So, yeah. And welcome back. When well, the stream is buffering, there we is go. it your, your problem or my problem? I have no idea. You have no idea. Okay. Well, oh, anyway, we're, we're back. We're back. Okay. So, good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Sword Fighting Stream. Uh, my name is Sasha, and in my left hand corner is my left hand corner, your right hand corner is Farhan. And uh, we're the instructors of Thrive King, and we're here to teach you sword fighting. And tonight we're talking about winding. Again? Yes, again, because last week um, I was a little distracted. My son was sick, so I would like to uh, uh, give it another go. And we've made some changes. We've got the text in a bit for you uh, on screen. So that's going to be interesting. And we're going to look at what Bringak has to say about winding. I've used the English translation you can find on Lichtenauer from his longsword uh, gloss. And I've edited slightly to only have the relevant parts. But all in all, it's pretty much the tra text directly from Lichtenauer. So uh, after that, to do, to do still something new in uh, tonight's stream, we're also going to look at a technique called Auster Nehmen. Uh I learned this under Auster Abnehmen. I'm not sure why, but uh, it, Ringeg refers to it as Auster Nehmen. Auster Nehmen. So that's taking off from the outside, taking from the outside, the outer taking. So yeah, shall we get started? Sure. All right, uh, so uh, last time we discussed winding, um, I showed some techniques, I showed some uh, things that I thought were counterintuitive, and uh, I just wanted to gradually do that again. So uh, Ringek actually mentions winding several times in his text, and he talks about winding both in a general sense, as in uh, a, a technique or application to do, a concept to do, and uh, as eight specific techniques, which is actually just two specific techniques on the left, on the right, up, and on the left, on the right, under. So yeah. So from what I understand, winding... Ringek, uh, the concept of winding that Ringek uses means moving the sword along the, like you're in a bind, swords are bound together, and you're moving the sword along um, the bind of the other, uh, along the sword of the other person, and hopefully to get an edge like that. So let's look at the text for a moment, and then uh, we'll see what he means. So hopefully this works. Uh, let me just go here. There we go. Yes. So, uh, you see the text, Ron? Maybe a 15 second delay? Or maybe yep. you can read it up. Read uh, it out. I don't think we have to read it. It is like super long. It is a little long, but the first time Ring I can talks about winding, he says it from the context of the Zornhau. So we've looked at the Zornhau previously, where I step to the right and I uh, cut in, getting a line advantage over my opponent. If he blocks, I should be get, able to get around his block and thrust in. That is called Zornort. And he says that if he's weak on the sword, 
And that he doesn't mean like if I'm on his week, but rather if he's not pushing against me. So either I've done the Zorn how to cut his sword away, or I've done the Zorn how and we have a very soft bind here. Then he says you can just straight thrust in. But he also says that, uh, so that's where we get this, is that uh, this is when you shoot in the point with hey, the Zorn uh, Sasha, well, how about we take down this text and get back to showing you instead? Sure. He then becomes aware of the point, displaces it with strength, and you move your sword up and above. Uh, wait, and oh, it's wrong text anyway. <laughs> I thought I fixed that, but he's talking about our shop name. Uh, I see Zorn out there. So. He's uh, up naming. He talks about up naming. Yeah. Shoot, I thought I fixed that. All right, never mind. <laughs> See? No worries. <laughs> okay, so that failed. Oh, through struggle, we grow stronger, right, Ron? Uh, technology is harder than swords, let's face it. Right. Technology is harder than swords. Let's, let's keep it at that. <laughs> uh, okay. You know what, I feel like one of those teachers that would push the, the TV into the classroom to play an old VHS tape, and then like he couldn't get the TV to work. I feel like that teacher right now. I feel like that every day at work. <laughs> right. All right, so winding. The way Ring describes it, I'll do it from, I'll do it, do it from my mind, I'll do it from heart. So the way he describes it is uh, off the cut, and I tried to do a uh, Zorn art, and my opponent displaces with strength. So he pushes my sword aside. He says then, raise your hilt up to ox from where you can push, uh, where your strong meets his weak. That's what he says. Where your strong meets his weak, then I can push him aside and I can thrust him at the face or at an upper target, an upper opening. So taking this from a proper bind, right? We have bound with the sword together. We have bound the swords together. And uh, I try Zornart, but he displaces, or rather he pushes me aside right away. I don't even need to see. I can see. I can tell. He has a strong bind. I can tell I can't do the Zornart because my tip is not aimed at his face. I have not accomplished my unset. So what I need to do is I need to bring my sword up. I go into an ox. And from there, I thrust in. And uh, you can practice this as two moves. One where you bring your sword up, and one where you thrust in. This is usually how I explain it to uh, beginning students. So in, in two steps. So one, bind on. Two, raise your sword up, and then thrust in. And because my strong is at his weak, he does not have the strength to... Uh, he doesn't have the strength to uh, displace my sword. And instead, I can just uh, stab at him. I can stab at him. I can maintain my line of attack and I can stab at him. So one, once more. Cut. Move up. Cut. And this is what I understand winding to be. For me, this is what winding is. It's uh, moving my sword along his sword to get my strong to his weak, and then using that leverage advantage to thrust at him. Ring Egg doesn't entirely agree, but we'll see in a moment how that pans out. Um, once you get a little bit, I, I said you do that as a one-two step, but once you get a little bit more familiar with this movement, you'll need to learn to do it as a single movement. So from here, from this bind, my sword only goes forward. It doesn't go just go up, it will go forward as I go up. And that's vital for mastering this, this technique, is that you do it in a single fluid motion. You cut, and then as I want to wind, I wind in, straight in. Uh, Fran, anything to add no. about this basic winding? 
No, basic winding is pretty straightforward. Basic winding is pretty straightforward. Um, yeah, so basic winding, that's that forward. And once you get, yeah, like I said, once you get good at this movement, you can start doing it as, as just a fluid movement where you cut and then immediately thrust in high. You can even plan for this. Um, yeah, so that's a basic winding. That's that's the first time he mentions winding, ring mentions winding in, uh, and he mentions it under Zornhau. Because we'll see in a bit where he mentions it under uh, the winding, the chapter of winding, separately. And he describes mostly the same, but slightly different there. All right, come. Are you uh, fixed again, Ash2? Sorry, let me just push on and in inhale all of his joints. They get loose if I move them around too much. All right. So, then um, as a follow-up, Ringek says uh, what to do if he defends against this technique. And he says the most likely defense against this technique is I push, I cut. He says then your opponent will bring up his uh, cross guard. His hilt. No, your opponent will bring up his hilt to defend against this. You can see that in two different ways. You can see that uh, where he will uh, try and go into the hanging guard. So he will push the sword to the side. Right. Uh, hold on. Let me just angle it a little bit better so that you guys can see more clearly. So I've cut. I thrust, but he angles it to the side. And here he says uh, that you have to stay in the wind, but uh, go to the other side, to the right side. Now, if he goes into the hanging guard, this makes no sense if I have to go to the right side, except if you do it like this, where you do the door flexion, right? You can change through underneath his sword from here and change through over here. And that's what Ring X says. Alternatively, he could mean that he's going to clone. I'm thrusting here. And then that makes sense. He says stab, uh, he specifically mentions stab through his arms at his chest or stab through his arms and chest. So from here you can go down here over going to the right hand side or again do door flex and, and stab on the knees differently one could imagine if he goes into the hanging guard once more i'm here i'm trying to stab through the hanging guard you you can again uh bring your sword down wind it down it's not what ring excess but but you can do it and then thrust here into his, uh, from underneath. So that's not what he uh, talks about. Uh, yeah, what Ring X says is you have to bring your sword from right, from left to right, you can thrust in between his arms and his chest. So there's a few options there and it's hard to tell which one he precisely means. Either I shouldn't be stepping in either here. So from here, I've just wanted to stab at him, but he's deflecting it to the side. I go here or I go over. He goes into ox. Now, mind you that these techniques, uh, these movements only work if he's still going into ox, right? If he is low and he wants to push you up right once he is up once he's in ox my sword will be here and then i can't get over right but if you do that in indus i want to trust here he brings his sword up in the movement in his movement i need to thrust at him interestingly uh Against that defense, you can't do the Mutir in second winding, but we'll get there in a moment. 
Yeah. We'll get there in a moment. So that's talking about the Zornhau winding. And I really get the feeling that Ring Akir isn't talking about winding with a, with a capital W. He's not talking about the techniques. He's not talking about the eight windings. He is literally just saying like this is, he's talking about the concept of winding the sword around your opponent. So bringing the sword up, winding here, he raises it up, winding down there. He pushes you to the side, winding here. So a lot to do with that. So let's talk about the windings as he describes it. Now I would like to go back to the text because I'm sure I have that one prepared. So it's not this one. That's that one, the first winding. And he said, do it thusly. When you come to him with the onset, so I'm fighting towards it, and he binds onto you against your left side. So wind the short edge upon his sword and drive well up with the arms and hang into the point above and thrust into his face. So you'll see that this is mostly the same technique. I have fought towards him in the two fechten. It can be a cut, can be with a cut, and he binds with me on the left over here. So his sword is on the left, my sword is on the right. And the only thing that he says that I should do differently is to bind with the short edge, which is, is an interesting uh, idea. So I'm not just raising my sword up, but I should bind with my short edge. I talked about this last week as well. And uh, my idea why we should do this is that uh, that way, when you fight with sharps and the swords clash against each other, they tend to hook into each other and kind of get stuck. So by binding with the short edge, what I have to do is I have to twist my sword to get up here in the off before I can stab him in the face. But that twisting motion sort of unhooks the swords and allows my sword to slide along his sword. Whereas if I cut here, now if the swords would bite into each other, then I can't move my sword up or down. So I have to unhook, wind up, and thrust in. And again, this should be done as a single movement. Like that. Anything to add so far, Fran? Uh, personally, when I've done this this version of the winding, uh, I found that it's quicker not to go into ox. Just to so, go straight forward. He does very specifically say that you have to raise your hands up, though. Yeah, you have to raise your hands. But uh, so the way you're going, sorry, sword, is you are winding up like this and then forward and I've kind of always just straight in turn the short edge down and then just go straight in sure sure I mean uh, the idea is that I get my strong against his weak he says that very clearly with the Zornhau winding Yes, uh, but he very... doesn't mention this with the this version of the winding. No, I guess not. I guess he doesn't. Uh, but yeah. he does use the same word, so it's a little bit open for interpretation. But I guess cutting, and then you say just straight in. Hold on, let me see if I can move the sword slightly more to his uh, left side. Get a better... There we go. All right. Sorry, just a second. Okay, so you're saying uh, cut in, bind, and then simply going straight forward. Yeah, raise your hilt, as Ring X says. Turn your... You raise your hilt a bit more. Yeah. So it's, almost like, a, I... it's almost like a shield how then. Yes, you're almost in a shield position. Because one thing I've noticed with uh, a lot of people, uh, maybe less experienced fencers, mm -hmm. is that when you get into a bind, they like to lift their hands in the crone. Yes. Yes. So, going so they straight want to in, lift their hands up. Yeah. Uh, if you go up higher with your... Oh, 
with your uh, hands as you thrust, it, I find that usually catches them before they can lift into crone. All right. Yeah, so that's been my interpretation of this winding for a while. Um, I mean, I've... I've seen both sides being used. Uh, I think Merlin did a very good version of the winding you know against me. But uh, yeah, I've been using this one to some success. All right, that's interesting. Yeah. Well, uh, if you've been able to helped... do it in stress testing, then that's definitely true. Yeah, uh, it also helps that uh, when you're turning into ring X second winding, all right, let's move on to ring X second winding then. So it's basically the follow on from this technique. Uh, if you want to explain the follow, I think you already did. The, it's the same thing as the Zornhau winding. Yes, well, the second winding is actually if he displaces the thrust with strength and yes. then to allow your point to hang in above upon the sword then wind to your right side and thrust. So your point should be uh, over his sword. So after that first winding, I'm here, I'm ready to thrust forward. He displaces me with strength. He pushes me uh, to the side, which I found is, the, is a very common defense against this, other than the cone and other than the... Uh, the hanging guard. Hanging guard is it, many people just eh, push it to the side. So uh, what Ringing then says is stay in the winds, but switch to the right side and thrust in. So that's simple. So I, I cut, I wind, I want to, I'm on my left, but he's pushing me to the side too much. So I have to step and go to the right. So do you do this then also with the half twist where your where your long edge is down? Uh no, at that point I'm keeping my short edge to his to his blade. Yeah, so with the short edge to his blade. Yep. So, so basically uh my rule of thumb when doing the windings is put the short edge to his blade and keep it there. Mm. Yeah, that would be a nice way of saying it. Yeah. Uh I need to be looking there. That would be a nice way of saying it. Uh, keep your short edge to his blade. Uh, maybe you want to get a bit closer to the, to the mannequin and the camera so that people can see what you mean by short edge. All right, sure. Uh, closer to the camera. Oh, we're getting very intimate right now. This is, this is not the way of social distancing. I have to get really close uh, to the right. camera. It's all right. Ash 2.0 has been vaccinated. <laughs> Ash 2.0. Dang it. He has been vaccinated before I've been vaccinated. I'm a teacher, I know, right? dang it. Okay, so what we mean is like, okay, he stands in his guard. I cut against him. I want to do my first winding. So what I have to do is when I check my, check my sword, right? Uh, I've explained this in the past, but this for people who might be new. Uh, the knuckle side side of my sword, the edge of my sword that's in the same uh, side as my knuckles. Um, it, we call the long edge or true edge, uh, if you're so fancy. Whereas the uh, side that faces away from my knuckles, that faces towards my arm and my body, we call that the short edge or false edge. Uh, so it's long edge and short edge in German manuscripts, yes. true edge and false edge in Italian manuscripts. Yes. Well, we might have some Italian wannabes. Uh, in our stream, so we don't want to exclude them. Teach them uh, yeah, superior right German, there. superior German fencing. So, uh, so yeah. So we switch to the short edge, and what uh, I feel, yeah. So Fran says, align the blade so the flat of my blade is at his edge, so I can thrust in there. Or, uh, and what I recommend is that you assume thumb grip. And then you can switch the short edge over there. Switch with short edge over there. So yeah, so I come here, 
switch around short edge plus thin. So yeah, uh, winding. And then when he pushes you aside, I want to thrust in, but he pushes me aside. I can switch around. And again, you'll see that the short edge, the side of my sword that's facing me, is against his blade, and I can thrust him in the chest or face, like right in the eye slit. By the way, you're really good if you can hit him right in the eye slit, like under training conditions and stuff like that. Yeah, you yeah. too. Okay. All the same. Um, All the same. I wanted to talk about one more thing when it comes to winding. Is the dry wunder. Because winding isn't just the thrust. In fact, um, if you focus purely on the thrust, you will actually never quite get it just nice. The most important part about winding is about getting that superior leverage, getting that angle to, to get into your opponent. And then it doesn't need to be a thrust because like I said, he will be pushing you aside. So uh, I might be thrusting in at him, but he will have not pushed me all the way aside, but pushed me sufficiently that my thrust misses. Well, what I can do then is since I'm already here, I can align my sword so that I can cut out, either with a draw cut or with a push cut. Since I'm already going forward, I might as well make it a push cut. And uh, sometimes you'll see that I'm thrusting in and he's displacing my sword, but then my strong reaches his sword, and then I can just cut through his defense and make it a cut. Or... I can compensate too much and miss him thrusting the other side. And I can also make it into a cut. So once uh, once my tip has passed his neck and I can't thrust at him anymore, I can change it into a cut or a hue. I always confuse this to cut and hue. Sorry. So I can... Uh, what you get is... Bind, wind, thrust, or bind, wind, cut, uh, sorry, hue, or bind, wind, cut. And you can do this for all sides. You can do this over left, you can do this over right, you can do this from under the bind and from over the bind. And that's how you get, uh, so ring X has eight windings. You have the first winding, and then the second winding if the first winding fails. And you can do all of them as a cut or a hue as well. So I bind. I want to thrust, but he displaces me to the side. I can wind my sword around and thrust in, or I can literally just cut him with a sort of outside uh, shield how with the short edge. Or I can make it a cutting motion, push cut or draw cut. And in my experience, it's like uh, like when you're doing a demonstration. Like something goes wrong, but you make the best of what you have. I try to get a, a thrust in, but if that fails, I try to hew or cut at my opponent because I still have that superior line. I'm still already mostly through his defenses. Uh, I, I see it as not so much a demonstration as a acknowledgement of the realities of combat, as in it's ne your cut is never going to be perfect, so take what you can get. Uh, ah, yeah. The Lichtenauer system, if, if anything, is very is very practical. If I can't stab you i will cut you if i can't cut you i will stab you i will get i will wound you somehow you you the third and the third one not you. it doesn't have to be perfect it just has to work yeah so uh yeah that's it 
oftentimes when I teach this technique, a lot of students will complain like, I can't get my thrust in. I always miss. Like, you know, do something else. Cut at him. Yeah, cue at him. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. As long as, as, long as he's, he gets injured and you're safe. Right? That's the first rule. First rule. You stay safe. All right, so that's what I wanted to talk about winding. And now I want to talk about Auschwitz, which is like winding. So it's a little bit. Auschwitz says, goes, assumes the following position. He says you cut upwards with an Unterhau at your opponent. Unterhau, right? I cut from here. I want to Unterhau at my opponent. And your opponent defects, uh, defends strongly on top of your blade. So my opponent, come on, Ash2, you can do it. My opponent defends strongly onto my blade. So from here, my blade is uh, trapped underneath his blade. And he says he pushes strongly down. So what he then says is like, you have to raise your sword and then push to your left, to your fluke, to your low guard, and stab upwards. Keep your helmet right, nice on straight. All right. So from Unterhau, he binds on top over here. And um, it is assumed that he will go into Hangen. That he will try and align his sword, he will try and do ansetzen and thrust at me. And this is actually a little bit important when it comes to the technique, because if you'll notice that if he uh, doesn't do it, I have to get really close to his sword. I make this big motion to get his sword around my head. Oh. So instead of that, uh, goodness. Instead of that, I want his sword to... Uh, but if he moves his sword forward, sorry, and if he moves his sword forward, like as if he's going to thrust, well, it, you'll notice that it becomes an index technique. It becomes a technique that you can do as he's doing it. And actually, in that thrust, this is one of the greatest moments of Fulen, if you ask me. Uh, you'll really notice that in that thrust, he has no... Uh, he has no strength to resist you, since his movement is, for, is aimed forward, since his motion, his momentum is aimed forward, you can re really easily push him aside. If you don't, I have to push here. Oh, I'm turning him, I'm turning him entirely, because now he's nice and stiff, and then thrust him there. Anything to add, Frank? I'll just name it. Uh, just, I think we want to point out that if your opponent is doing nothing but leaning on your sword and not fighting you, that's more his problem than yours because at least he's not posing a threat to you. So you don't really need Auser Neyman here. Yeah, so that's right. Um, in that case, Schnappen might be a better option where I uh, push my home, pommel forward and cut him down in his neck here. But the idea is that after he cuts my sword down, he wants to thrust at me. And then I need to bring my strong to his sword, push him aside, pass my body, and counter thrust at him. And since he's thrusting forward, he will already be moving towards me. So that counter thrust should be really easy to score. Although, arguably, I have not seen a lot of Auschwitz in, in sparring. Once or twice. Uh, I, had to, I had to intentionally do it. I, I haven't seen it either. It, it's, it's not one of those natural movements. You really have to drill this one. Yeah, and it's not just that either. It's also... Uh, like you don't often come in that that situation where I cut from under and he cuts on top of my sword. Maybe if he crumps, maybe if he crumps after, sorry, 
Maybe if he crumbs after uh, after I try an untau, he tries to crumb my untau down. Mm-hmm. And then as he moves up, I follow him up and then thrust in. I like that it's also a sort of Nachreisen. Like he cuts me down, and then mm-hmm. as he's preparing or starting his next attack, I follow him. I follow his movements. I follow his sword. I stay in the bind, and all I do is push him side a little. I get back to a sturdy structure to my fluke, and then I can stab him in. I like that. Yeah, it, I, I think it's also a thing because we don't see many people try hang and mm. as much. Fair. Fair point. At, yeah. at least in Zwart Kring. I, we're not talking about anywhere else, but at least in our club, among our students, we don't see them do hangen very often. No. It, the hangen is one of the first techniques we teach them, but yeah, you're right. I don't see them doing it a lot. I, I admit I don't do hangen very much, but uh, Same. I'm a small guy, and hangen doesn't really work all that well for small guys. Mm. I really feel that some of these techniques that Ring Act describes... Mm-hmm. Um, you don't get into that situation a lot because, uh, like, I don't know. I want to say, I want to say because we're not in real combat, so we're we're trying a lot of swing, big swings, and and stuff like that. A lot of fighters I fight, they fight, and then as soon as the swords bind, they disengage to cut over the other side and and stuff like that. Uh, I see some upsets and, and some uh, sort of counter thrust, and I see some uh, winding, and I see some durchwechseln a lot. Then beyond that, it's mostly just basic cuts. Oh, oh and the Zerkau. Everyone loves doing the Zerkau. And the Zerkau and the Krumpau, yes. I try to do Shield House uh, these days a lot uh, with varying degrees of success. Oh, my shield house are honestly my shield house are awful. It's the one thing I've been wanting to fix. I find that that the more I use the shield house, the more I uh, the better I get at them, and that the more successful I am with them. But it, even in sparring matches, it takes me two or three tries to get it right. Uh, I, I think my biggest issue is I'm a lefty, so my shield house is always a that bit is awkward. a big flaw of yours. Yes, that is a big yes, flaw. It, it's a huge flaw in my training. No, yeah, I everything's on the wrong I wouldn't, side. I wouldn't add that last part. <laughs> Huge fall period. So yeah, winding. Ah, there yes. my winding was with you. And how's the name? Has there been any questions from the chat uh, today, uh, Fran? No. Uh, everyone's late. So everyone's they late. In. They just tuned in. How uh, typical? How typically Malaysian or Singaporean? or Indonesian. I'm just going to say Southeast Asian. Uh, apologies if you're from North America, then it's also typical for North America. Uh, typical for Europe. Uh, everyone claims it's their thing. Yeah, everybody claims it's their thing. Not the Dutch, though. The Dutch love to be punctual. So... <laughs> oh, I, I, yeah. I, I remember your classes starting on time. And so, uh, I don't think we have any questions. Um, do we have anything to add to the also? The also Neyman or the winding? Also Neyman. Uh, winding. No, not so much. If you want to practice the also Neyman, right? let's talk about practice. You start with his sword uh, on top of your sword. And as he tries to orient his point towards you, right? Because that's what he needs to do. And thrust at you. You follow his point. You follow the bind. You follow his sword. And you just push him a little bit further. And then... Make a slight tap towards his chest. Do not stab your sparring partner in the face. All right? Unless he's wearing a mask, like a proper fencing mask. Not like uh, like a Guy Fox mask or something like that. So, yeah. From here, from the outside, push inside and in. And uh, after my cut, winding, winding one, push inside, winding two. Of course, you can do everything over right, over left. Oh, his arms have uh, given out again. Give me a second. Good side. 
feel like I've been fixing him a lot today. Uh, you have. You have been messing, messing with around with him. Sword. Yeah. Just because of the winding, like, I have to push his sword aside and push him in different guards and binds. Fine. So, over left, if I attack him over left, I can't bind with him. I have to go up here. Just there. He pushes me aside. Go over the other side. If he pushes me up, I can go underneath. Ring does make a mention that uh, as a follow-up to the winding, like he says, if your winding fails, if he defends against your winding, know that you must follow up with a cut or with a hue. And basically he says, if he defends, uh, if he defends far to the side, disengage and cut. Or if he defends uh, upwards, cut him under the hand. So he says, uh, Ring Iglesi says, like some people like to approach and go into cone, where his, his hands go up. So uh, if I were to try winding, I'd be here. So then he says, like, okay, cut him under the arms, which is what Fahan loves to do. <laughs> we both know why I do that to you. Yes, you're small. I can't reach your head. So, yeah. So, if he... Uh, if he approach... Okay. This will be the last time I face you, Ash. After that, uh, no more. All right. So, he approaches you. I try to do cut. I try to do winding, but he defends upwards. Then I can go underneath here. I mean, if you can push him down here and then pummel him in the face or something like that, I always like to do that. So, yeah, winding. Anything to add? Favorite I follow-up? Don't have much. I mean, we're not going to talk about the... We're not going to talk about the, the underbind, underwindings today, right? And we're not going to talk about it because essentially Ringek doesn't talk about it. Basically, Ringek... I mean, he mentions it offhand. Yeah, basically what Ringang says is like, okay, over right, you cut, then you wind with the short edge and you thrust at him. And then over left, he uses the exact same words, like literal copy-paste. Right? You cut, you wind, you thrust at him. And then in the next paragraph, he says, oh, and by the way, do the same for the two underwindings. And then he goes on with, you can do it as a cut, cue, and thrust. So, yeah. Literally, the only thing he says about the underwindings is, oh, and you can, can also be do this as underwindings. If you want to do this as the underwinding, uh, okay, fine. Don't fall apart, Ash. But the bind needs to be different because the underwinding is assumed that it's ox against ox. Unterhau against Unterhau. So uh, let me see if I can get him to go into an ox. It's a most difficult guard to get him to go into. Hold on, I need to put my sword down for a second. Apologies for the noise. There we go. You know what? That almost looks like a human ox. They're surprisingly almost human, Ash, too. Much like original Ash, also almost surprisingly human. Okay. So if he's an ox, this is a terrible ox, okay. And I'm in an ox, I've cut from underneath. So what I can try and do is I can bring my strong to his weak so that I can push him aside and thrust in. So we bind here, right? I want to do this, I want to bring my strong to his weak and go here. Have him in there. And then if he again defends that strongly, I can go around the other side and thrust here. It's really difficult to show on the, on a dummy though. Oh, a static dummy, right? Yeah, it's a dummy. It has a wide range of movement, but doesn't quite show that range. Ox guards. 
It's very good for fluke, not too good for aux. So perhaps I will uh, show that some other time when I have, like, um, the lockdown is slowly coming to an end here in Malaysia. So maybe next time I'll have my assistant trainer come here and then we'll demonstrate it uh, in person. I think that would be better, right? I think that would be better, a lot better for this one. Uh, I, yeah. I had some other thoughts on the the underwindings, but uh, nothing I will talk about at the moment because I'm fairly certain I'm wrong. Ooh, okay, teasers. These are teasers. These are cliffhangers for next these, week. These are basically things that have been bouncing around my head that are clearly wrong, but I won't know till I try it. <laughs> All right. Uh, very good. So, yeah. Barring any questions from the chat about winding... In the uh, ring the style. Chat has moved on to talk about Maya Rapier. Maya Rapier. Okay, that's that's an entirely different... I would love to do Rapier sometime. Like, that's uh, high on my list of weapons I want to learn how to fight with better. I can, so, I can do a little bit Rapier. I've done some um, Capovero, but not a lot. Uh, Maya Rapier is a bit closer to side sword kind of things. Because it's a much shorter Rapier that he uses. Yeah, okay. But uh, that, that's where we've ended up in that chat. All right, very good. Well, all the same. I think that's where we're going to end the evening then. Uh, much, much more sure. calmly than last week. Unless you have anything to add, Fran? I have nothing to add. Um, I think we're they're, they're chatting about rapiers now. Do you have anything to say about rapiers? Since about we're, rapiers, we're rapiers about are this. fantastic. If I had to choose a dueling weapon, I would choose a rapier. Like I am a, a longsword fighter by far. I have the most experience with longsword, but I like rapiers for their elegance and their basket hilt hand guards. Uh, generally speaking. Uh, I get hit on the. I, I would be if I were in a real duel. I would be very worried of getting hit on the hands. So having good, solid hand protection would probably be better. Oh yeah, uh, uh, I I try some really really ambitious blocks when I'm using my side sword uh, rape in the my rapier style. As in, I will happily block a blow with my knuckle bow. Hmm. Yeah, for sure. And, well, uh, it's not safe, but you know what? <laughs> it's a thing. <laughs> it's a thing. It's a thing. Rapiers are uh, rapiers are pretty cool. Uh, yeah. Well, Capo uh, Faro is frustratingly op uh, obfuscated in his instructions. Uh, uh, I, I don't know. I, I have not read any Capo Faro. It's not easy to interpret his moves. I have not read any Meyer. I would uh, love to fight with Rapier, like in Capofero style, against someone in Meyer style, and then see how that works out. Um, in, in all honesty, the longer Capofero Rapier will probably just have so much advantage. Eh, maybe. Maybe. Oh, maybe. Uh, right. Rian will take you up on that. Ah, you have to come over then, Rian. Come over yes. to Malaysia, and we shall uh, fight. Rian we shall says... fight again. We shall take it to. A... Take it to the fields. I miss Seize the initiative this year. Uh, I don't think it's happening yeah. this year. Uh, we should plan something. Uh, but yes, uh, Rian is game. We, you, you will fight him. Yes, I will fight you. The next time we meet, we shall fight. It is, it it is will so, be glorious. It will be glorious. Oh, God, okay. I still uh, remember the last time we fought. Like, I tried to I come in know. for a grapple, but that, you were just like, and no. Uh, Rian is legit. Like he's legit. Rian is like the act actual fighter kind of person. Hmm. But yeah, uh, I guess we're done with that. Yeah, I is think so. Anything else? Uh, anything else for the evening? Then uh, no, not in chat. I think we let's greet off and then uh, let's wrap call up. it a night. Uh, sword, sword, sword. All right. Yes, yeah, sword. Yes, sort.
The next okay. week we have to talk about Duplirin and Mutirin then, don't we? Oh, yeah, we do. Yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's about the last that is still remaining from grade two. I Gosh, agree. darn it, have we gone through like all the grade two materials already? I mean, in lessons, I have to like get students to practice, and it's one thing that I can't do over the video. So I, I know, right? Is, like, like, explain how the techniques are done and how what my interpretation is, and then move on. Yeah, but you see, in class, we also have to keep going back over old stuff before because right. people keep it's like in classes. <laughs> yeah, we in class one we have person A and person B show up, and then in class two, when you want to do the next part, person C and person D show up, but not person A and yeah. person B. So you have to do the previous class again. Yeah, I, I'm sure. I'm sure other clubs can relate to it. Yeah, oh, yeah, for sure. Okay, right. let's do this. All the same, ladies and gentlemen, Chris Dich, thank you so much for joining us, whether you are on Twitch or on YouTube, and uh, I hope to see you guys next week. Like, subscribe, follow that sort of stuff. Not sure if I'm talking okay. to anybody new here. All right. Thank All you right. so much, everybody. Thanks, everyone. See you next week. Bye.